Kramer's rule is a method of solving systems of linear equations using determinants. We'll start with writing our system in such a way that the left-hand side of each equation contains the variable and the numbers without variables are on the right-hand side. Then we define three determinants, the d, d sub x and d sub y. The D is the main determinant of the system. It is formed with the coefficients of X and Y. The first column in our determinant D are the coefficients of X. The second column are coefficients of Y. Then we define determinant D sub X in such a way that we replace in the main determinant column of coefficients of x with the column of numbers from the right hand side. And we leave the column of coefficients y intact. And then determinant d sub y is formed in such a way that the column of coefficients of y is replaced by the column on the numbers on the right hand side of the equations. And the theorem says that if the main determinant D is not zero, then the system has exactly one solution. And that solution is of the form D sub X over D and D sub Y over D. So this is X value that solves the system and this is Y value that solves the system. Now, if main determinant D is zero, and both d sub x and d sub y are also zero, then the system has infinitely many solutions. And that solutions are represented by one of the equations. Equations then are equivalent. Now, if d is equal zero and either d sub x or d sub y is not zero, then the system has no solutions. So this is a very nice way of solving system of linear equations. Let's justify briefly why we have these formulas. So let's consider our system AX plus BY is equal S and CX plus DY is equal T. We'll try to solve the system using elimination. So we multiply the first equation by d and we multiply the second equation by negative b. The first equation then becomes ad plus bd, uh, adx plus bdy equals sd and the second equation will be C negative C B X minus B D Y equals negative T B. And if we add those two equations, the Y variable will be gone. And if we add X values, we'll factor out X from both terms and we'll have A D minus C B. And on the other side, we'll have SD minus TB. Now you can notice that this number A times D minus CB is the determinant A, B, C and D. And therefore, this is the determinant D. And on the Right hand side, we have the determinant S, T, B, and D. And this is the determinant D sub X. And therefore, what we have is we have D times X is equal D sub X. So if D is different than zero, then we can divide that equation by d and we'll have that x is equal d sub x over d. And that's one of the solutions. And in a similar way, we can find the value of y. Now, if 
that d is equal to zero, then there are two possibilities. If d sub x is not zero, then what we'll get is we'll get the equation of the form zero, because d is zero, so we'll have zero times x is equal to zero, is equal d sub x, which is not zero, and therefore we'll get something that is not true, and that means we'll have no solutions. Or we can have the situation where d sub x is equal to zero, and then our equation becomes zero is equal to zero, which is true for any value of x. And then we'll have to check what's happening with the y to claim that we have infinitely many solutions or not. So we have the conclusion of that theorem justified here only for the values of x, but it can be similarly done for the value y.